What's poppin' guys? Here are 10 tips so you don't suck when playing the family in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Tip number one, this is the first and also the most crucial tip of this video. You really gotta learn the maps and know all the exits so you can prevent the victims from escaping. On each map, the victims have the same types of escapes. You got the fuse box escape, the generator escape, the battery car escape, the pressure valve escape. If you don't know how to secure them properly and where they are located, you will lose the game. All right, for tip number two, as soon as the match starts, you gotta get stuff done fast. When you're playing as the leather phase, you're gonna always be spawning in the basement and your job is just to run around, chase the survivors and keep them from exiting the basement as for as long as possible. If you're playing any other family member, you will be spawning outside the basement and your job is for the first one to two minutes to really get stuff done fast. You have to secure the property, secure the exits and start collecting blood for grandpa so we can wake him up as soon as possible because once grandpa is awake we can go down in the basement and chase the survivors down so these first one to two minutes of the game are super important and they will decide if you succeed or if you're gonna lose all right tip number three if you're playing as the hitchhiker or the cook you really have to use your abilities in the first few minutes of the game to secure the exits for hitchhiker you can place three traps you're gonna want to place them in locations such as the fuse box, the generator or the battery or maybe just lock down uh, the whole area by placing the traps in front of doors. If you're playing the cook, you have three padlocks that you can lock doors with. So it's really important that you instantly lock the right doors, which are for example uh, some exit doors, also like the main doors leaving outside the family house for example or the doors protecting uh, the battery or generator exit because good preparation is half the effort. So try to be as fast and efficient as possible. If you press the middle mouse button on PC, you will see highlighted hours of different uh, important objectives in the game like the generator, the fuse box, uh, the other family members, uh, where grandpa is located as well as where the blood bags are located. This is really crucial information to be more efficient. Once the preparation is finished and you have locked down the properly, you really have to check constantly for the locked doors. The most easy and the fastest escapes for the victims are gonna be uh, going through the battery, car exit or the generator. So for example on family house, as soon as they get outside the house, you have to know it. Otherwise you're gonna lose. So you really have to check constantly for those locked doors if they are still locked, if they are not locked anymore, that means that a survivor has gone through and you gotta chase them down. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button right now, subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. And for our next tip, when you notice that a lock has been broken and the survivors might be somewhere outside on the map and you don't know where they are, you really have to constantly check the generators, the fuse box, and the battery car exit as well as possible pressure valve handles that are missing or fuses that are missing because that means the survivors may be onto their way to escape right now and for hitchhiker you might consider replacing your traps in front of the generator in front of the battery and in front of the fuse box now really your best bet as the family team is to work together and don't let the victims escape from the basement or from the house itself because after that it's gonna be way harder to find them. Tip number seven, we have communication. If you're playing family, you really have to communicate with your team because not communicating will make it so, so much harder. You have to constantly call out locations of survivors to really stay on top of the game at all times. Use your three versus one advantage in a chase. When you're chasing a victim and they're giving you a really good chase, looping you around and around forever, you really gotta call for help or leave the chase. This is very important because if you don't leave the chase and you get looped infinitely, the other team members will be able to open exit gates while you're distracted. So if you find a survivor, it's best to try to corner them somewhere and wait for help. Call one or two family members to assist you, like to go around uh, flank them so you can gang up on them and use your team advantage. Team play as a family member in this game is super important. Tip number eight, when you're playing Nether Phase, you have a unique role in the game. 
You are the only person in the game that can destroy barricades crawl and crawl spaces. So whenever you have you're free on time, you gotta use the time to destroy some of those crucial barricades and those pesky crawl spaces. So the victims have nowhere to go in a possible chase. Number 9. Use your abilities. I see so many family members that are new to the game and they f just forget to use their special abilities. So for example for the cook, uh, try to use your ability often so you can locate survivors and call them out to your teammates. Alright, last tip is gonna be for all your Leatherface players out there. You are able to rev your chainsaw with the right mouse button until it is until he's holding the chainsaw above his head. That means if you strike an enemy while doing that, you will probably one-shot them. If not, they will nearly be dead. But this ability is pretty hard to hit and you be gotta be careful not to overheat the chainsaw, otherwise you're gonna get stunned and you will have to uh, turn on the chainsaw again. Also with Leatherface you have the unique ability to carry a downed survivor that is laying on the floor and carry them to several hook locations that are scattered around the map to do like a special killing animation. It's gonna be that animation from the beginning where you hook the survivor and he just slices them in half with the chainsaw. And that's really cool. I hope you enjoyed those quick tips. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I see you guys in the next one. Peace.